1985, singer Amy Grant made the move from Christian to mainstream pop with the release of her album, Heart in Motion. Some of her longtime fans responded by burning their record collections. To them, her decision to expand beyond a core Christian message was blasphemous, if not a straight up deal with the devil. That brings us to the all new 2020 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray, also known as the C8. Fans of the Corvette, it seems, are finding this new design a bit hard to swallow, even going so far as to say, that's not a Corvette. Does this new C8 Corvette have what it takes to set our hearts in motion? We'll find out right now on Driving Sports TV. Heritage aside, it's hard to believe that a car that looks like this starts at only 60 grand. Of course, the model we have today is loaded with some extra options, like the 2LT package and the Z51 Performance package. As you see it here, you're looking at $78,265 US dollars, including destination. The design of this new Corvette is pretty dramatic, and yes, all those vents are functional, feeding the radiator in the front and the engine in the back. They also help with cooling the brakes during particularly hot track days. The engine, of course, sits low and behind the driver, but in front of the rear axle to give the Corvette excellent balance. This is a 6.2 liter V8 with a dry sump system to keep it lubricated under high G-forces. It puts out 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. Chevy claims a top speed of 194 miles per hour. The Corvette, of course, powers the rear wheels through a mechanical limited slip differential connected to an 8-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission. Sorry, no manual available. EPA rates this at 27 on the highway, 15 miles to the gallon around town, and much, much less on the track. In the back, you'll also find the largest storage area. This is good for a small set of golf clubs. It also provides storage for the removable top. The interior of the new Corvette is unlike anything else on the road, but it somehow still manages to remind me of other Corvettes, like the C5 with its cockpit feel and driver-focused accessories. Except for this row of buttons right here. Clearly, when it came to Aircon, the designers just ran out of ideas. But overall, the interior is excellent, with soft-touch materials, brush aluminum, and a complex but attractive design. The seats are on the small side, but nicely supported with power adjustments, memory, heating, and cooling. Power it on, and you're greeted with a 12-inch digital gauge cluster and a heads-up display. Both are fully configurable. The main cluster provides several layouts that can be further customized. You can tie these layouts to different drive modes or just pick one to use all the time. Infotainment is on a separate 8-inch touchscreen. This provides all the standard stuff like radio and maps. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are also included. A wireless charger is located between the seats for compatible devices. Track Day enthusiasts will appreciate the performance recorder that ties telemetry to video, which is saved to a removable SD card for later viewing. The screen also provides access to all the cameras, which is appreciated more than usual considering that the engine is blocking your normal rear view. In terms of advanced safety, like most sports cars, the Stingray really doesn't offer a lot. It does have rear park assist alerts and a teen driver mode. Heavens know why you would let a teen drive this, but to each their own. It also has blind spot warning and rear cross traffic alerts, which were part of the 2LT package. The Z51 package, which includes brake suspension, rear axle ratio, tires and cooling, also contains a performance exhaust system. This is why some Corvettes like ours have an extra five horsepower, 495 instead of the stock 490. Here's how the exhaust sounds in the various drive modes. First, touring. <laughs> Next, Sport. And finally, here's Track. All of these modes can be modified and saved using the Z mode button. This gives you quick access to your favorite setup with changes to the exhaust note, suspension, throttle, steering, transmission, and traction systems, just as you like them. Now let's talk about the lift system. With a push of a button, the front of the C8 takes just seconds to increase its ground clearance. This helps prevent scraping when entering driveways and parking lots. It's a great addition, and I'm happy to see it here. 
Since it looks like there's a chance of rain, let's go ahead and put the top back on and head out to the countryside where we can get a better feel for just what this car is capable of. Driving the new Corvette is surprisingly normal. I mean, everything kind of falls to hand nicely. The suspension is really not that brutal, even in track mode. Now, of course, this is a sports car. So in terms of active safety, it doesn't have a lot. It does have blind spot monitors. It has collision mitigation. But if you're looking for adaptive cruise control, yeah, you're not gonna find it. Now, these vehicles start at just over $60,000. This one right here has several options. Uh, so it's priced up to $79,000, just shy of that. And really, what you get is remarkable. My natural inclination is to compare this to, say, a McLaren 570 or an Audi R8. Those are both way more expensive than this car. I mean, this is about the same price as a BMW 5 Series and not even an M. I'm just talking a regular 5 Series. So what you're getting here is just absolutely, you know, it's not just remarkable, it's absurd because, I mean, really, just look at this thing. Now, driving it every day is actually quite nice. This has the adaptive suspension, so when I toggle over into, you know, um, let's just go into touring mode, it's very compliant. The seats are very comfortable. Um, I have a long row of buttons here, but I have seat warmers, I have seat coolers, I have dual zone climate control. I mean, this is, you're not giving anything up by driving a car like this. It even has quite a lot of storage space with that frunk and trunk. The transmission is very quick. And yeah, you could complain that there's no manual transmission, but you know, if they made a manual, they would sell very few of them compared to the overall vehicle. It's remarkable that they even built this thing, to be honest. I mean, we're at the tail end of gas-powered sports cars. The future is electric. That's been decided already. So the fact that here in 2020, one of the most miserable years on record, uh, <laughs> that they came out with something like this. I mean, talk about highs and lows. I mean yeah, we got a pandemic and all this other garbage going on, but man, we have a C8 Corvette. It's got a mid-engine. Now, why did they put the engine back there? Well, the engineers said that basically they had taken with the C7 Corvette, the Corvette platform as far as it could go. For the next level of performance, they had to put the engine back there. And I am so glad they did. That really transforms this from a cool car to an awesome car. What they've done is they've taken the Corvette formula, thrown it into a blender, mixed it all around, and came up with something even better. And the just the mere thought that they can offer this for around 60 grand, how? How? I think it's really one of the things that most sports car designers are trying to achieve that ability to be a car that you can drive every day, but also take to the limit effortlessly. And the Corvette here, the C8, it does that. All you have to do is flick it into track mode and <laughs> watch out corners. Okay, let's try a zero to 60. Now, there is launch control on this and it's a little confusing because I've read one thing online and I don't think that's actually how it works on this car unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set it into track mode. Uh, I'm going to hit traction control off once and twice and that puts it into competitive mode. Now once I do that I should be able to just press down the brake really hard and then put the gas throttle in and it should hold it at the maximum uh, RPM for launch. Let's just see. Yep, it's holding it at 3,500 RPM. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna do that and then I'm just gonna release the brake pedal and see what the car does. Now this is gonna be kind of interesting here. Um, never done it in this car and uh, we got a lot of grass on both sides. So hopefully this works. 
Three, two, one, go. Holy mother of God! Whoo! That's a zero to 60 of 3.23 seconds. <laughs> wow. Now you might be thinking this is a mid-engine sports car. It's probably just gonna bite me in the ass if I try to slide it, right? Not so, actually. Close to 500 horsepower, to me, is a real sweet spot. It's enough to have fun, but not really get into too much trouble. I mean, I can use power to coax the back around, but it's not gonna just, you know, club me in the head like a sledgehammer every single time. And that's what really makes this car special. You know, the nice thing about this vehicle is, is it actually pretty enjoyable to drive, even just normal speeds. Now, the benefits, of course, of a mid-engine vehicle is balance and power and how it delivers that power. And unfortunately, driving on country roads, which are public roads, um, yeah, really not going to tap that benefit. There is going to be a market for people to track these and this thing will probably kill at the racetrack. You know, it'll destroy vehicles that cost twice as much. I could see that. However, I think a lot of people are just going to drive this, keep it in their garage, take it out on the weekends. And really, this is an amazing car. And it's not just because it's a mid-engine sports car, borderline supercar. It's the fact that, you know, it has comforts, it has amenities, it has a pop top so that you can get that open air driving experience. It's just really cool. I mean, yeah, when I retired, one of these would be great. Um, it's, the, it's kind of the sports car that really remembers the essence of a sports car, the enjoyment. It's not just about ridiculous horsepower. It's not just about smoky burnouts or insane zero to 60 speeds. It's also that unique special feeling that you get with a mid-engine rear wheel drive sports car. And that is what the C8 delivers. So is this right for you? Well, I don't know. It's not right for me. You know, you can get a very similar level of enjoyment with a Miata that costs significantly less. Now, I'm not saying the two are equal, like not at all. However, if you had it in your garage and it was just a car you took out on the weekends for a little bit, you know, of fun in the country, Miata is great. Um, however, if you want the next level and you want a car that doesn't just look amazing, but really, you know, it's got the stuff, the C8, the C8 is what you want. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Would you get this or would you spend double the money for a McLaren 570? Or even a McLaren GT? How about an Acura NSX? Post a comment below. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you again next week.